Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day 26, and today's node is the Labs Edge Damage Swap. So, firstly, once again, in case you don't have Labs installed, you can go over to your shelf tools over here, go to shelves, scroll all the way down to side effects, and you'll see side effects labs. Enable it, go to the tab, update tool set, start launcher. From here, you can go to labs and packages click on install packages, and then select the most recent package. You can go ahead and install it from there. Then you'll just need to restart Houdini. So assuming you do have labs installed, let's go ahead and use the edge damage tool. So it is a sub level geometry node. And all we have to do is use the edge damage, labs edge damage like this. So with this, we just take a single input. I'm just gonna use a cube for now, plug this into first input, and let's see what we have. By default, it'll actually turn this into a voxel based cube. So it'll run a bunch of VDB operations, converting this into a VDB and then back to geometry. So as you can see, we go from this to this. If we go over here to the edge damage node, you'll be able to see this visualized damage. And this is going to show you the areas in which the damage has occurred. If we increase the damage amount over here, you'll see that more damage is applied. You can also go down to the bottom over here and you can make changes to the type of noise. So if we want a smaller element size, we can do that. Also under voxelization over here, you can decrease this for a higher resolution voxel mesh, right? So we end up with something like that. Now by default, this is going to remove or chip away, right? So as you can see, it'll take our box and it'll chip away. So it'll damage the edges, but we can also do accumulation on the edges. And to do that, all we have to do is go over to the damage controls, go over to advanced, and this direction is just going to define whether we are removing or adding. So minus one is removing, one is going to add. So you can see that this adds to our edges. Now do keep in mind that this option over here is only available if we're doing the VDB option. If we change this, which we will be doing shortly, we will no longer have access to this. I'm gonna drop this back down to minus one and let's take a look at the other option. So over here, as I mentioned, VDB is going to convert our box into a VDB and then back into geometry. So we don't actually have the same input geometry that we had. If we wanna keep our geometry, we can switch this to Boolean. And what this will do, is take our original box and just Boolean out these shapes from it. Again, the amount over here is going to control the amount of damage that we're applying, but we also have access to resolution. If we increase resolution, you'll see that we end up with higher resolution chipping, right? So there's more detail in that. And then we can still make changes over here to things like element size for our noise and make all sorts of adjustments over there. Now, one of the extremely useful options that we do have on here is this mask option over here. And a mask value of zero is going to apply this damage, the mask value of one is not going to apply any damage. And so we can actually test this. If we go over to our box, I'm just going to increase the axis divisions, go over here, use an attribute wrangle. And all I'm going to do is just say at mask equals V at P dot Y, right? And if we want to visualize this, we can check our node information, click on mask. You can see that it goes from zero upwards, but we want to move our box above the origin. So I'll just move it to 0 0.5. So now it goes from zero to one, right? So we have a mask value that goes from zero to one. If we now plug this into our edge damage, you'll see that the damage is only applied towards the bottom. If we were to invert this, we could do something like one minus V at P dot Y. Alternatively, we can even use a noise attribute. So attribute noise over here, set this to a float, change the value to mask, visualize it over here, and then make adjustments. So plug that into your edge damage. And this just gives us a really nice noise pattern to control where our edge damage is occurring. So the last thing that I just wanna show you is the other option for the method over here. So I'm going to go ahead and use a rubber toy. Drop this over here. Now, oftentimes when we have a geometry, perhaps we don't want to actually affect the geometry itself. So what we can use is once again, the edge damage. But this time, instead of applying this damage as we're doing here, let's just change this to colors. When we change this to colors, you'll still see that this deforms the geometry. And we can also visualize the damage. So that's the damage over there. So over here, we have this displacement option. Just switch this off. So what we have now is this voxelized geometry with a color applied to the areas of damage. And what we can do with this is we can actually use something like a labs bake. So a labs map baker, this one right over here. And what you can do with this is take your low resolution geometry. So the original that hasn't been affected by the voxelization, you can take the high resolution one. And what you can do is you can just switch this to nearest surface, click on render, give it a moment. And what you'll end up with is a map that you can actually apply to the original geometry. So if we just use a UV quick shade, I can quickly show you what this created. Over here, we'll just go and choose that image that was just rendered out. So you'll see it over here, labs edge damage color. And there it is 
using our UVs as opposed to the actual geometry. And this is really useful because you can take this and put it into a particular shader, and then you can do all of your edge damage at the shader level, right? So it's just one way of generating a mask. You can make changes to the color that's coming in, and you'll end up with a baked out image that you can use as a mask. So those are just the few ways that we can use the lab's edge damage node. It's extremely useful, especially for just quickly wearing down a bunch of assets. It's awesome for adding detail to things. So play around with it. And with this maps baker, you can bake out the colors and use this as a mask inside of your shaders. That's all for this video. Tomorrow's video is going to be the lab's chaotic shapes. So I'll see you then.